Hello, everyone. Um, Patrick Zorro. I manage the uh, Ascent Financial Engineering Program at uh, Lehigh University, and I have the pleasure to speak to someone literally across the world, um, Ishan Shah. Uh, Ishan Shah is a quad researcher at Mantra, and he's based in uh, Mumbai, in uh, in India. And um, he's got a quite of interesting background, uh, you know, I've been um, uh, at Merrill Lynch, Barclays, and now he's a quad researcher at Mantra. But um, why don't I let him introduce himself a little bit of his educational background and what is working on, um, you know, what he does at the at Quantra, and then we will be talking about our favorite topic of the day, which is uh, algo trading, algorithm trading. Some some view uh, for him in terms of what what it's about and what other trends in the market and uh, what we should be expecting. So Ishan, welcome and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks Patrick for having me. And uh, it was a kind introduction. So uh, let me go deeper into that. So uh, so yeah, as uh, Patrick mentioned, I uh, first of all completed uh, my engineering in computer science. Uh, that's why I learned a lot about coding. So uh, in fact, I was uh, the first one to complete the assignments uh, and uh, move on to do different coding assignments, uh, even in my uh, practice work. So I was deeply passionate about coding. And uh, later on, I work with uh, Merrill Lynch. Uh, that's where my interest about uh, finance and trading uh, started, and uh, which made me pursue an MBA in um, finance with a majors in finance from uh, Sydney. And uh, during Sydney, I uh, pursued an internship uh, with an algo trading firm. So in India, it was a small firm, but uh, but it was a very good learning experience. And uh, from there on, I uh, just looked, uh, never looked back and uh, thought this is the right place uh, because it allows me to channelize uh, my coding skills, uh, the trading or the finance knowledge which I have acquired and also the stats knowledge. So all this combination uh, made this a really uh, fruitful and uh, go-to field for me. And uh, then I worked with Barclays and uh, later on moved to Quant Insti, uh, where I'm currently working and uh, and enjoying to the fullest extent. So let's so let's talk about algo trading. What is it? Yeah, uh, so algo trading, uh, you can think about this as uh, a computer program or a set of instructions uh, which receives a stream of data. It can be a price data, sentiment data, fundamental data, and it processes it and gives the trading signals and automatically places order to your broker. So as you have noticed, there is no manual intervention either in terms of decision making or placing orders. Everything is done by the computer itself. So that's broadly speaking, algo trading. How is it? So, so let's talk about the, the technology part of it. What are the some of the language skills that you need in order for you to? Um, yeah, so, the... uh, language or I'll say uh, coding skills are uh, pretty much important along with the technology expect to it. So you would have noticed in my uh, definition of algo trading is I was talking everything is placed by the computer. So you should be very fluent in talking with the computer. That's where the coding uh, skills come into the picture. And uh, there are different uh, styles of trading in algorithmic. For example, you can be a high frequency trader uh, where you require uh, knowledge of languages such as C and C++ where uh, the computation is really, really fast and uh, you can uh, create a good good uh, high frequency trading strategy uh, but if you are on a medium to lower frequency uh, style then uh, you can work with python and uh, the benefits of python is uh, it has a lot of uh, packages and a lot of support for uh, everything right from uh, machine learning to providing simple computations and also a lot of brokers have their own api uh, which are uh, very much core into python so you just learn Python and few API methods and you will be able to take your strategy, uh, create your strategy and uh, create an end to end workflow, like right from creating the strategy to placing orders to your broker. So, so that's where uh, this, this is very important. 
So let, let's talk, you mentioned API because uh, some of our students work on um, API for a, um, a project on multi-factor um, bottling and they needed to uh, get an API from Bloomberg. Um, why don't you explain to us a little bit what the API is? Yeah, definitely. So uh, API is, uh, you can uh, think about API is something which allows you, uh, which allows your Python program to talk with uh, another application. Uh, for example, if you are trading, uh, then you might have to talk to interactive broker if that's your broker. So API enables you to uh, have your Python code talk with your broker. And why this is required is uh, to fulfill the last step, which is to automatically place your orders, which are generated from a Python code to your broker. So uh, typically these are like helper methods, which will, which will be going by the name, like uh, place order, which will take some parameters like the securities, uh, how much quantity you want to place, blah, blah, blah. And it will fire your order to the broker. And it can also receive uh, information from your broker. So broker might be posting back uh, your positions, uh, what is your PNL and other stuff. So it will be able to interpret that and use that in uh, making more decisions from your algorithm. Okay. So you need language skills, you need technical skills, you need to work, know how to work with an API. Uh, so if this is all it is about algo trading, um, so the technology, technology part of it is what, um, 10%, 20% because you, you need a, you need a strategy and right? you need to know, I mean, there's a technical part of it and then there's a strategy part of it because you need to know what to tell, you know, what to program. Uh, yeah. How so, does this... uh... So the typical split uh, between this uh, would be like 70% of the technology, uh, sorry, the strategy development and 30% of uh, the implementation part. And uh, why the strategy development is important is uh, that's the heart of your uh, heart of your everything which you are trying to do. So uh, heart in the sense it will uh, decide, uh, take the information, con process it and convert it into meaningful information. And that's where you'll be spending most of your time and uh, it will require some bit of expertise in statistics and also in terms of trading behavior and uh, and finance knowledge so that overall comprises around 66 to 70 percent of uh, your overall framework and remaining 30 percent to say automate all these things which you have learned and even to say empower your own strategy with say machine learning and ai so to do that you will require uh, some bit of technology skills uh, in you so let's so 70 percent is strategy within that strategy the way you the, the, the way you're describing this process it feels to me that is more of a quantitative approach rather than a fundamental approach because you mentioned some understanding of finance but you also mentioned um, uh, machine learning and uh, observation of the market so within strategy how much is quant and how much is qualitative uh so uh, i would uh, say both go hand in hand so uh, just the quant without any qualitative understanding of it uh, will can backfire and uh, similarly just having a hunch or uh, understanding of the market without able to quantify or express that uh, will also not work here because uh, Remember, these are machines which are trading, which will require complete instructions and they just can't rely on quality to expect. So let me take an example. So uh, you can't just say uh, Asian paints, uh, which is one of the stocks in Indian markets. You just can't say to computer, it's a good stock. Uh, you need to quantify that of uh, how much good it is. Like you can say it is uh, better than a Berger paint, which is another paint company. Uh, so you're using quality to expect like something is good and also quantifying it like it is uh, better than uh, Berger paint. And all this goes into the strategy part. So the knowledge that you need to acquire from the financial side is based on your observation of the market or your understanding of the market? Uh, so uh, so uh, the knowledge uh, to create good strategy uh, can be acquired from multiple places. Uh, so let me start with a few places where you can acquire this. Uh, one is uh, definitely uh, from your own observation or the understanding of the market. 
So what I've seen is a lot of manual traders uh, over a period of time would have learned uh, some skills or patterns in the market. And uh, what they do is they try to automate those uh, patterns. So that's uh, one set of people. Uh, now there is another set of people. What they do is they read a lot of uh, stuff which people are doing, like academic research, and a lot of different styles of strategy, and they try to create a strategy around, like enhance those strategy, and then create a full-fledged uh, algo and con trading strategy. So you can be anywhere, uh, but the idea is uh, to to channelize whatever knowledge you have. either uh, based on your own experience or acquired from somewhere else uh, into a meaningful set of rules which you can uh, automate it okay you mentioned you could be anywhere so basically what you're saying is that if you're looking at a patterns however you want to define it doesn't feel to me it's too fundamental you're not looking at uh, discounted cash flow analysis and things like that i think focus on trading patterns and correlations and your your last machine learning to I work for you. Then really it's more mathematically oriented. Right because uh, when I'm thinking of uh, Jim Simons for example at Citadel he's a mathematician. He's not a fundamental um you know he's not a fundamental guy. So in terms of the skills what I'm trying to get at is what I I mean you need the programming skills um need to need to quite understand the market or at least what's going on on the screen um but you also need to have a good you mentioned statistics so let's dive a little more into that what some of the key uh topics that you need to be familiar with yourself in statistics and in math to really grasp that concept So oh, yeah I think Patrick you are spot on uh, so uh, mathematics is uh, one of the key uh, building blocks of uh, a successful uh, con trading strategy and uh, so uh, let me give you an example so a typical uh, manual trader what he might be doing is he might be looking at some price patterns or maybe some kind of uh, candlestick patterns and uh, uh, maybe some technical indicators right and uh, he might be uh, monitoring uh, one or two markets or asset class maybe Uh, over his whole lifetime uh, but compared to that uh, what we are trying to achieve uh, through algo trading is uh, trading in multiple markets where every asset class has its own nuance like uh, you cannot fit a single rule to trade a, every asset class so you need to have a more customized rules for each and every asset class and uh, also these are traded uh, in different time zones so uh, so that's practically impossible for humans so generally it's practically impossible for humans uh, that's where uh, you need uh, some bit of maths or some bit of uh, knowledge uh, which is not followed by manual trader to use to create the strategy so uh, that's where the maths and stats parts come to in the picture for example let me talk about uh, one of the famous strategy which is used by uh, most of the hedge fund which is statistical arbitrage so uh, in statistical arbitrage uh, what you do is typically you watch uh, for the co integration between the two asset class so co integration is uh, what's the difference in price uh, between the two asset prices and uh, typically what you observe is uh, one uh, outperforms the other for example if i take uh, a stocks from the same industry uh, it can be uh, see hdfc bank and uh, kotak bank these are the two private banks in india so typically there are times when hdfc bank outperforms kotak bank uh, because uh, maybe the earnings are announced a little bit earlier compared to kotak bank or uh, some kind of information which is there and over a period of time kotak will also come with its own earning announcement or its own set of uh, numbers and it will catch up with hdfc bank so whenever we see uh, hdfc bank is diverging uh, very much away from kotak bank we typically short hdfc bank and go long on kotak bank uh with the expectation like in future kotak bank will be able to catch up with hdfc bank so such kind of uh, relationship is very easy to capture if you are aware of uh, the statistical concept of co integration and correlation and uh, typically uh, these are not run on say two stocks uh, but on plethora of stocks and uh, these are also as you can see are market neutral in the sense uh, you are long on one and short on another so for example if something like uh, covid happens where all the markets are down by 20 30% uh, 
uh, if you are running this style of strategy the market uh, your strategy will typically hold on because uh, loss in one position will be offset by the profit in the another position you mentioned co integration what other principles should students um, be aware of or practical practice uh, people that practice uh, um algo training should be familiar with in terms of i'm 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 looking from you some of the mathematical principle that they need to know uh yeah so uh, typically uh, you should be uh, pretty good in uh, say uh, doing various test uh, like uh, hypothesis testing and uh, this uh, some of the concepts which i mentioned in uh, the previous answer was uh, co integration correlation uh then uh, how to uh, find uh, this uh, various hypothesis testing like you can mm -hmm. you should be familiar with adf test johansen test and uh, say correlation test which is pearson's correlation test and uh, there is also hurst exponent uh, so that's to do with the nature of the time series so all these statistics which will help you to analyze the nature of the time series uh, like hurst exponent uh, would be helpful i'm sorry what did you say what Hurst so for statistics, for statistics, you mentioned what did you mention? Ah, uh, co-integration, correlation, Hurst exponent, variance ratio test, ADF test, hypothesis testing. All right. So, all right. So we've got the technology part taken care of. We've got the um, um, fundamental. Uh, curriculum slash understanding of some of the mathematic and statistic principles pinned down. What I mean, you, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with Citadel. Do, do you have any idea why is it that they are so successful? Do you know what their approach is? Have you? Uh, so I haven't uh, deep dived uh, into what uh, Sitada strategies are, and uh, very likely. But well, nobody I, knows really what they are. But uh, yeah, right? and but, I also think very likely they won't have disclosed their strategy because these are the bread and butters uh, uh, how how they earn money. Uh, but uh, what I think is at very broad level, any successful hedge fund uh, would have uh, uh, some of the key traits which uh, differentiate them from uh, other who are not so successful. So typically, uh, one which I have seen is uh, extensive focus on the data. So uh, data is uh, typically huge, uh, which is available out there, but a lot of the data which is not clean. In the sense, uh, a lot of the data is garbage, and uh, you need to clean that data. So some of the examples which are very crude in nature, but will help you understand what these errors are. So some of them is uh, suddenly price going from hundred to thousand, uh, which is not practical uh, scenario. Uh, another situation might be some of the missing values which are ignored if you just take the data as it is and uh, some of the things would be negative stock prices so which is uh, not possible so these are some of the examples so data becomes the focus or the prime part because that's the key ingredient which goes into your strategy and if that is of good quality your output will be of good quality and uh, second which are seen as uh, extensive focus on maths uh because uh, if you are able to do this uh, statistical test thoroughly and uh, with a sufficient level of confidence in back testing uh it's very likely that they will also hold uh, the same uh, profile or behavior in uh, future and when you are doing live trading so i think uh, this two uh, skills uh, which i think are uh, differentiates uh, this good hedge funds from the bad ones yeah but and, you, and i mean they are uh, python uh... Codes that allow you to clean the data, right? The big data. You have the ability to clean data. To, I mean, there's a. I know some of the students are taking courses on that, on on how to clean the data. That's what you're referring to, right? To make it usable and. Yeah. So yeah, I can uh, talk a little bit more about it. So I just yes. talked about uh, price data, but uh, typically financial data are uh, very bad. uh so uh, you need to run a uh, couple of uh, checks uh, around that so one of them i just mentioned is about the percentage change so uh, it has to be within a particular limit uh typically another set of data which you can see is the sentiment data so typically what i've seen is uh, it's my own personal experience i just uh, took a sentiment data where uh, the scores were uh, typically between uh, minus 1 and plus 1 and if you take the average like a rolling average of last 90 days the score would have been uh, say around uh, 0.8 to 
5.6 that was the window which it was and suddenly what i saw was a structural shift uh, in the sentiment score so suddenly it started uh, ranging uh, from minus 2 to plus 2 and the values were uh, actually lower than the previous value so it became from 0.2 to 0.3 so that uh, made me question about this data because i created the model which had this range between minus 1 and plus 1 and suddenly there was a structural shift so i thought about rescaling the data i thought they would have changed the scale uh, but with the rescaled uh, data the the values should have been say close to 1.4 1.2 to 1.4 but in fact it was 0.2 to 0.3 so this observation made me question the data vendor and then i realized they have completely revamped their methodology so which makes uh, the data completely not uh, reusable because i used a completely different data to train my model and the data has completely changed so that's uh, one about sentiment data and uh, most recently uh, i just like to share this uh, is uh, is it was nothing wrong with the data but uh, with the methodology which i followed so uh, typically if you see uh, the silver etf uh, which is silver uh, slv if i'm not wrong so that uh, typically trades uh, in uh, nyse markets and it closes at 4 pm and i was trying to create an arbitrage strategy with silver futures which uh, trades in comex exchange and uh, it closes at 5 pm et so there was this uh, gap of 1 uh, hour like it, uh, the silver etf closes at 4 pm and silver futures closes at 5 pm right uh, but while back testing i just ignored that 1 uh, hour part and what i thought is both of them are the end of the data uh, end of the day data and let me create a strategy around that so i got a wonderful results around that but uh, while actually uh, going and uh, doing a paper trading around that i just realized how big uh, error i have made You know it's interesting uh, because I remember there was a strategy uh, by uh, one of the items that, for example, Citadel did a while back, that they took advantage of um, convertible bonds that were trading in the U.S. versus in England because of the legal nature of the convertible bonds. Uh, there was a bit of a discrepancy. Price was. Bond was underpriced. Dividend was underpriced in London versus in the U.S., and they took advantage of that. So it, it's kind of the same thing. So you're basically taking advantage of in in, in different markets. So you're you're enabling enabling the market to be more efficient, and uh, which is a good thing. But but then let me on, on my final topic, I guess, on, on that subject. Then I'd like to hear more about what some of the research that you're working on. Is um, I, I think what sixty percent or seventy percent of the market of the trading is is um, is algo trading? Is that correct? Yeah, I think uh, that's correct. So in US, uh, sixty to seventy percent US equities are through algo trading, and if you go to forex market, I think it should go to around eighty percent of all the trades through algo. So I guess that enables the market to become more efficient, or But because we're not doing the trading per se, um, does it make the market more unstable? Uh, so uh, I have uh, answers uh, on either side of the argument. I know, <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, what I think is, uh, it does bring in efficiencies and it does enable you to do things uh, which were not uh, possible before. uh for example uh it it can help you get better price uh, so you don't have to worry a lot about it it can uh, we can have algos which can discover better prices for you and also bring efficiencies in the market uh, not only the local markets but uh, any cross uh, country or cross region arbitrage which are there can also be exploited through uh, algos so overall all these things uh, do bring in lot of uh, profitability to the firms who are doing this correctly and uh, also efficiency in the market uh, but uh, with all this uh, with uh, complete reliance on technology uh, there is a, always a downside if uh, these things are not used correctly or if there is any failure uh, which can uh, cause a flash crash and which we also seen in the past uh which which is uh, a downside risk but i think uh, looking at the upside i think it's worth uh, going in this way mm -hmm. so why don't you um take some of the remaining time that we have 
talking to us about, because you're a quant researcher. Uh, what are you working on? But uh, what are some of the ideas that you came up with or, or some of the, at least the direction of your research? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think uh, this is uh, one of the favorite questions which you asked in this podcast. Uh, so uh, I was uh, recently, uh, in fact, I'm still uh, rec- uh, working on uh, reinforcement learning. So uh, you can think about this uh, as a machine learning or an artificial uh, uh, intelligence approach uh, to solve the problem of trading. And uh, what inspired me to this uh, project was uh, the AlphaGo success uh, in Go and chess game. So AlphaGo uh, is created by Google's DeepMind and uh, they used reinforcement learning uh, to train one of the most uh, sophisticated and complex uh, algo, which was able to beat uh, one of the best of the best uh, human players in Go and chess. And what is most surprising uh, way in which uh, Go has uh, did this is it played in a way which uh, no human has thought about playing it uh, before. Uh, for example, if uh, if you guys are familiar with, uh, say, chess, so idea of the chess is to uh, take the king of the opponent, right? Uh, how much pieces you have at the end of the game does not matter. But uh, whenever any human plays, even whenever I play, I try to keep maximum pieces on the board and then try to attack the opponent's king. But what this uh, reinforcement learning algo did is it actually didn't care about keeping all the pieces on the king uh, uh, if it's able to get the opponent's king. So the moves were thought to be risky, but it eventually paid off. So we thought, uh, okay, it's playing in a very unique and its own style. So let's try it on trading. So that's where we uh, tried on trading. So we uh, took one of the most uh, trending stocks and uh, it was able to capture the trend. It was initially struggling and also struggling in the middle. But the most uh, surprising element which came out of this whole research was uh, when the whole markets were crashing uh, during the COVID times, like from mid-February and so on, uh, this algo was actually silent of not trading during those periods. And uh, when actually markets started to recover, it was actually again uh, started buying uh, the stocks. So uh, which which made me believe like no human would have done that. Most would have uh, fall to the trap of uh, falling markets and would have exited from the position. But I think uh, this is a really interesting uh, feat, uh, which is coming out from this great i think it's uh it's quite interesting so um i'll tell you what uh, well we don't want to make it too too long of a of a podcast for now uh let me end here and thank you for your time and i think um let's uh let's wait a while and then let's come back to some more uh in-depth um strategy i was thinking maybe on the math side i'd like to get you to talk a little bit more very specific items, but uh, that will be for another podcast. So, Ishan, uh, thank you very much for your time here. This was uh, greatly appreciated. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. And yeah, always pleasure to talk with you. And we'll be very happy to uh, contribute in any fashion uh, which is helpful to you. Thank you.